Hello. Hello. Welcome to episode three oh. of the Form My Mind podcast. We're going to have to keep track of these. We are really One, good. two, three. <laughs> <laughs> so today I'm not very well. Oh, I've got a croaky voice. I know. A husky voice. I love the husky voice though. <laughs> I really like it. I think it's do really you, nice. Do you like your husky voice? I think it's really sexy. <laughs> I think I can make a, a living out of this. Yeah, we'll call you later. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Hello. <laughs> okay, I will try my best to get through today. Yeah. But you've got... I've got something for yeah, you ready. You have. Do you think you can do this I'm again? I'm really scared. We've done this yesterday because I was trying to get Kay really well for this podcast because <laughs> she couldn't speak yesterday. But uh, we've got... Something interesting, a shot of um, ginger. I'm really nervous. And we've also got garlic. No, this yesterday, the gag reflex kicked in. It was awful, wasn't <laughs> it? Was it? Awful. Yeah, yeah, you were not it having was. it at all. But I what we're going to do for you guys, we are going to do this with you because I need to make Kay responsible for this to actually drink it because otherwise she might not drink it. So we're going to take a clove of garlic. <laughs> And we're going to swallow ginger. What's the science behind this? It's meant to be like a natural antibiotic okay. instead of like going to the doctors and getting the right, okay. pills. So we're going to try it. I don't know how we're going to get on. I know I can do it, but I don't know how <laughs> Kay is going to be with this. So <laughs> bear oh. with us. Hang on. So tell me what you've got here. Hello. Do you want to do it with me at the same time? Is this... <sighs> Ginger and turmeric. This is the stinks. Fresh ginger and turmeric. Right. Thank God there's just me and you in here, by the way, because I might have a sexy voice, but I've definitely not got oh, a sexy no. breath. Guys, I'm going to be stinking <laughs> of garlic. Who cares at this point? Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? I don't know. Can I just do one at a time? No. I yes, yes. Go on, go on, go on. I'll just slap it all in. Do that. Oh my god. This is really hot. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Mm. What do you mean? Um, this is my nice. eyes are watering. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just get like the kick at the back of my throat. Oh, it is hot, guys. Kay has been sick. Kay has been sick. <laughs> mm. Have you finished it? Mm. No, you can't finish it, can you? No, you can't. How do you feel? I feel great. Oh, wow. I can... Um, 100%. Yeah. This garlic is going to be coming the other way, isn't it? Right. Thanks are we a that. bit... Are we ready for this? I think we're ready. Is your throat nice and warm? <laughs> <laughs> the throat tickle's throat gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're on a roll now. We're on we? our roll. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. we'll be okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, okay. welcome to Reform My Mind. Welcome, welcome back, guys. Sorry about that. We needed to uh, sort uh, K out, you know. We're here to just we be... Had, we are. We had, again, such amazing response from our last know, episode. Like we keep say, saying this, but yeah. in all honesty, it's just... It's madness, isn't it? I think it really touched a nerve with a lot of people. You know, mm. talking about relationships, talking about attachment styles. Yeah. And for some, you know, it's one of the first times people will have heard the term attachment style. And quite a lot of people responded, didn't they, to us saying, oh, wow, you know, I've really recognised myself as an avoidant attachment style or I've really seen myself as an anxious attachment style and starting to recognise some of those patterns that I might have in relationships. I know, I think when you speak about them in a way of like we are like we're friends it's completely different when you have that dynamic I feel like sometimes when you're a more in a environment when you can't be your true self or not necessarily your true self but comfortable it can be difficult to bring this up can't it yeah so at that point you just think oh I'd rather not even mention it or even ask the question I feel like it's really good to make sure that you are in a comfortable environment before you start conversations like this oh yeah absolutely I mean I wouldn't kind of advise going around 
advertising your attachment style. For no, example, no, no. It's such a personal thing, isn't it? And it, it's something that we say really loosely to kind of maybe start to recognize some of the patterns within yourself and how you may respond to people and how that can impact particularly in relationships. Yeah, it again, it's getting yourself into that environment where you feel safe, you feel seen. Again, I think that's an important key because, yeah, you are okay with that person, but are they willing to listen? Yeah. You know what? I'm just laughing now because I'm actually thinking you brought, you brought up online dating and you were saying last episode about how people sometimes aren't truly themselves on there. Mm. And I'm thinking, imagine putting on your profile, I have a secure attachment style. Oh my God. Can you imagine? <laughs> You're, You're not gonna have anyone like, oh, messaging you. Flag. <laughs> Gr- it depends, green or red. It can be either, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I am uh, insecure, or am I anxious? Yeah, attachment. I've done the inner work. I've done the inner work. I know your dating site <laughs> putting that on. Oh if anyone, if everyone could just do that, can you imagine how much easier would or that like, be? List your toxic traits. <gasps> do you know what? That's it. These so- are my red flags. Take me or leave me. I think there should be a dating site where you just only expose your red flags. (laughs) You've heard it here first. I know. It's like you expose your red flags. You know where you are with people. Because on dating sites, you only put your best self, aren't you? Your best self. The best picture, this and that. I want this, I'm this. And it's just like, yeah, but... Have you ever actually looked on a dating website? I have recently, but it wasn't mine, mm. so I... <laughs> no, it wasn't yours. You mean you, you've got one? Oh, you're no, not no, no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't actually mine, but I've never... I've, I've heard of it, but I've never seen, like, the, yeah, no, what's I've it called? The actually, main page? Yeah, yeah, I've never the, actually seen one Yeah, either. the feed? I don't know yeah. what's called. You, like, but, swipe or something, don't you? But I've seen it, and it just... It looks almost like there's, like, a few pictures. There's a bit of a description under each one. Imagine the pressure of, like choosing a picture to put on because really that's going to be obviously the first thing that someone sees i know but you have to put a mixture of pictures as well there was a lot of pictures no, on there when i looked i think i'd be absolutely devastated and they get going quite on there, someone swiping away from you you'd be like what yeah they get quite spicy as you I go do down them. as well yeah <laughs> which is interesting isn't it i'll show you my nice um you know calmed version and then i'm going <laughs> it all just goes come see the real me yeah, go to the bottom <laughs> and you'll see the spice <laughs> do, do, do people actually put those type of pictures on yeah i've seen the one that i looked at i was like okay <laughs> so now, mm, oh, now we're getting to it. i wouldn't i wouldn't go to the extreme of like you know fully you know but there's definitely skin so what are we calling that come and see my black flags <laughs> come and see my skin <laughs> skin, skin. <laughs> no but i don't know it's just such a weird thing like I, it felt weird looking at it yeah. it was a bit like you're selling yourself I can't, do you know what i'm dying to ask you who it was but i can't so you can't no. i can't say who no, it was because I, 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 I can't show say you later it. yeah i can show <laughs> you later i can't actually show you later because i looked at the oh, yeah. profile on their phone Right, okay. So I can't, go, unless you go and join. Actually, we know <laughs> someone that has got, a, one of our friends has got a date insight on their. On Maybe their, we can just have a night in and just scour it. Scour it who <laughs> is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and obviously we started this like dating, mm-hmm. you know, site subject. What do you think about it? What's your opinion on it? Um, do you know what? I'm really open-minded, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, whatever anyone wants to do. There's no judgment from me at all. You know, live and let live. It's, um, I mean, I don't know if it's something I would do, but, you know, it's, mm. what about you? Would you Would you put yourself out there in that way? I don't know, because I've not really ever been in a position to do anything like that. So I, um, I've never really thought about it, to be honest. Mm. I don't think so. But then, who knows? You never know, do you? Yeah, I, you know, I've got a strong opinion on mm. this. I don't. I'm not against it fully in a way of like, like you said, if you want to put yourself out there in that way, then absolutely fine. But I think for me, the way I am as a person, it's really, it's a bit too much. I just almost feel like, do I really want to put myself out there Mm. in that way? It's a lot of pressure and not only that it's pressure in that department, 
I don't really want people to be flicking through my pictures and judge me by just what yeah. they see. On just the on your appearance. Yeah, as well. I just think that yeah. it's so superficial and I wouldn't ever want someone looking at me like that because there's more to me. So there's not just a pretty picture online that I don't know. I just it's a really weird yeah. feeling. It makes me uncomfortable when I talk about it. There's a lot to be said as well about that instant connection and spark. Mm that you feel with someone when you meet them and I think you and I are both really good judges of character aren't we like we always say we can not to judge a book by its cover Mm -hmm. but you can really get a vibe with someone like pretty much straight away and it's your gut feeling I really trust my gut feeling and it's never ever let me down Mm -hmm. ever yeah and I'm exactly the same honestly it's almost like every time I look back at it it's never let me down it's always right it's spot on every time I've had a weird vibe about someone let's for example they you know they're really nice funny like they're quite welcoming and you know you have a good conversation with them but there's something that is just not right and you can just feel it and you like mm-hmm. your gut feeling just going yeah. mm, I'm not sure something here is not okay yeah. and then you keep what I do I keep that thought and then, you know, next time I met them or I heard something about them is always right. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. But other people really don't see those things and can be drawn in by people. Mm. And I think that kind of, it lends itself, doesn't it, to a little bit about what we were talking about in the first episode. Yeah. And the second episode. And one of the questions that we've got about kind of how do you recognize somebody's toxic traits before you're kind of too deep in that relationship, I guess? I know, isn't it? it we need to just get the balance. Mm. You know, you don't want to judge someone like to extreme when you meet them at the beginning, but at the same time, you do want to be careful. <laughs> Is that the right word? Yeah, like just have a bit of, you know, that thought at the back of your head if something didn't feel right at the beginning just keep hold of that because at the end of the day you know it will come out if it's not right there's a lot to be said though isn't that about being secure in yourself in order to be truly happy in a relationship and we were talking about you know recognizing triggers and things like that but also it's keeping in mind your respectful boundaries what you are willing to tolerate and not tolerate in a relationship yeah but it's it's respect and there's also confidence I think I think I've touched up on this on the last episode haven't I about confidence and how people get it wrong because when you say well for example if I say I like someone confident I'm going to repeat myself but it's basically I don't mean someone that's super like forward or loud or that you know, is confident because they, they look good because mm-hmm. their appearances are great or whatever. But it's more in the way they handle themselves in a conversation. So when they speak into me, it's more how they have that part aspect of them where they are confident and they stand there and they can look into your Like, make eye contact. Yeah. Eye contact, guys. Eye contact is one of them things. If you can't make it, if somebody can't make eye contact with me on a date, what are they hiding? Mm-hmm. Like, why can you not look me in the eye and speak to me? I'm like super focused on looking yeah. you in the eye. No, now. no, no, I'm but like... it's but it's true, isn't it? It's yeah. like you have to be able to make eye yeah. contact it's with someone. It's quietly assertive, isn't it? It's about being sure of your own opinions and your own stance and not mm. having to be led by somebody else. I think that's the the kind of the confidence that you're describing is attractive. Yeah. What about? Because we we had another question come in. Uh oh. Um, we have so we had so many. Oh, I don't even know really what, which did. one you're gonna mention. We really did. So the one who said, "Do opposites attract?" So this kind of this kind of ties in a little bit to what we're saying mm. because if you're talking about because you're quite a confident person but quietly assertively confident, yeah. not out there and in your face. So if you're saying, you know, I like that type of thing in a partner. But then there are people out there who say, well, you know, opposites attract and maybe a super confident person would be better suited to a super quiet person. How do you feel about that statement? It's such a weird saying, isn't it? Everyone's using it. Oh, yeah, you get on. What? Because you're so the opposite of each other. 
And I think, personally, I think that only works at the beginning of the relationship because it's exciting. It's like, ooh, brings up that flame, that yeah. fire, that... Something's different here. And yeah, like those butterflies, like, oh my God, this is so good. But I think down the line in the relationship, it can bring issues. And when I say issues, I mean big issues because you are dealing with two people that are completely the opposite. Mm-hmm. You can have things in common, like let's get that straight, you know, you can. But how do you react in situations and how does the other person react in the same situation? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, for example, we're at a party with our friends. Does the other person just take himself or goes into another room? Or do you just, you're left just, you know, socializing with everyone while yeah. they're taking the sel- th- themselves away? What is the dynamic? Because you can have similarities and be a bit opposite at the same time. But is when you come yeah. together... And you're in the same environment. Mm -hmm. How do you react in that environment? And I think as well, there's a lot of people that that confuse that Mm. that initial kind of attraction, isn't that? That lust, that, oh, it's a little bit exciting. This is a little bit Mm. different. We're doing different things. They're taking me out of my comfort zone. But then ultimately, it's about what happens when you're further down the line and your values don't match for example or your likes don't really marry up together or you've got different routines and I think that's that's a big one one. I am so glad you've mentioned that that is so big in a relationship because how is that person living their life on a day-to-day and how are you living your life so if somebody's like super fast paced like, I want to be doing this, do, 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 constantly mm-hmm. busy doing something, but the other one is a little bit more laid back. Yeah. So maybe they're taking their time more, they're not really put, putting pressure on themselves. Can you imagine how that can be so yeah. frustrating in a relationship where you just look at the other person and be like, yeah. what, what are you doing? Or, or like one person's got like a really nice routine, you know, they like go, getting up early, they like going out, they like going to the gym they like going walking and then you've got another person who is maybe isn't into the same things they they're wants a bit to have a lion laid back yeah wants to have a lion can you imagine me and you in a relationship oh my god I think I'd die can you imagine she gets up at five o'clock yeah but you don't go to bed till like two in the morning I know and then I'll just be on my own at night just watching Netflix and on I'll my be own like getting up with the beds <laughs> You know what? It's really, really funny. Actually, this this morning made me laugh so much because I woke up this morning. I had like twenty five messages off there, but then, but that's just the norm. That is literally yeah, just the very norm. Very normal. But then I sent you about thirty back, knowing full well that you were fast asleep. You wasn't going to respond, but it was like thirty different threads of conversation. And I woke. <laughs> And I woke up and I was like, oh my God, she's been, oh, of course she's up. Yeah. And then I looked at the time, but it was, it was so weird because I woke up and there was something on Instagram. There was loads of posts. There was loads of messages. <laughs> and I was like, what the <laughs> hell? She's doing amazing. But we literally have that like opposite, don't we, in terms of So then schedules. again, look how with this example, it is the opposite. But again, it's in situations I'm I'm meaning more of like social situations yeah. because I think this is where I've struggled personally with my other partners where I've struggled in social environments where we go together and you know where there is a couple this is where I struggle I struggle massively because there's there's a line of like I want to be social and I want to speak to everyone you know we're here they've invited us and the other person has been super, like, just not having it. And at that point, I don't want to point at my partner and say, oh, he's quiet. Oh, mm. he's this. and Because I don't want to highlight that in yeah. front of everyone else. And that's not necessarily a, a detrimental quality in somebody else, is it? That mm. could just be an aspect of their personality that they're quite introverted yeah and it comes down to then an introvert and an extrovert and can they can they gel can they work together Mm. I'm a bit both you know I can be I can be really quiet and I can be quite up to you know 
chatting for hours and things like that. I think, again, is the environment that you go into. Yeah. So you have to think before you go somewhere, especially if you have these differences in, in, a, in a couple, you need to just understand, are we both comfortable going to this event? Mm-hmm. Are we going to be put a bit, you know, is one of, them, one of us going to be a bit uncomfortable? That's another just a little, you know, almost having each other's backs in a way of saying, I think, you know what, I think you should go on your own for this one mm. because I'm not, I don't want to stop you from going, but I don't want myself to, put myself in a situation yeah. where I don't socialize and I, I come across really quiet. Yeah, and that's, it's compromise, isn't it? And it's communication. Yeah. But I also think as well, there's an element of things where, where people can change and they can either grow apart or they can grow together. Mm. So it all comes down to thinking about, I guess, what type of person you want to be and you know you said this didn't you in episode one I think it was about how you change so much particularly you know when you go from your 20s to your 30s I do feel as though you can become a a different person and you you know you start to kind of think about okay well what type of life do I want to lead and what type of partner really suits that reality for me yeah I think you need to be honest Mm -hmm. with yourself first of all and then with your partner because you have to recognize that do I want to have a quiet partner I don't know does that then it without it's not in a self I'm not being like it's not in a selfish way it's more like saying well I like socializing obviously I'm not going to go overboard with it but I do like socializing now and then is that partner capable able to you know come with me to these events and be okay with it because if that's what your life if that's how you see your life going then maybe a partner that's super quiet is not for Mm -hmm. you in that in that environment or then again have that honest conversation with the other half and maybe try and compromise and come to an agreement where you go do you know what when you go with your friends I'll I'll just do something else and you just enjoy yourself because I know you like the aspect of socializing and maybe try and do things together that make you both comfortable and not the other one feel a bit left left Mm -hmm. out because then again you can be going out with your friends all the time and your partner is always like left out isn't it and then what do you do then and I think that's a quite nice point to to bring up what somebody else asked as well about toxic traits so recognizing it's a biggie, isn't it? yeah how how do you recognize red flags and what is ultimately a toxic trait i think we all struggle with it we all i find it difficult i mean i can i can recognize certain red flags which are super obvious but i think when you go into like the really really nitty like super in depth ones it's really hard i think that's when you just think Oof. i think particularly as well because people are so used to hiding those certain aspects of themselves or not actually recognizing them in themselves there's a lot of masking that takes place so people Mm. can portray a version of themselves that they feel is is the best kind of thing what other people want to see and it's only in those intimate more intimate relationships yeah that the bad habits start to show or those toxic qualities start to show. But then again, it, it, you, you can't, it's really hard at the beginning to to be so strict with yourself and say, oh, I have to recognize all these red flags right now at the beginning because you're not. You have to spend a lot of time with someone. And I'm saying a lot of time with someone, I, I don't mean on the outside. You mean when you live together because that's when it all changes. Yeah, it does. You know, go into <clears throat> someone's house and staying there the night or whatever or have dinners and watch movies and whatever it's different to living with them Mm -hmm. is when you live with someone every single day that you notice their patterns Mm -hmm. and that's I think where the toxic traits come in and Mm -hmm. you can see how do they react in this situation how are they like you know whatever they might be doing it's really important to just be like okay I'm gonna give myself a little bit of time to see how this person's reacting. Maybe it would be a good idea to just be like, well, let's just move in together and see how we get on. You know, do like a bit of a trial run. <laughs> Is that the correct way of saying it? It's just like, you know, you put yourself, you can't put that pressure on yourself in realizing 100% all these red flags right at the beginning. Because that's honestly, that's just going to make you so 
uncomfortable mm-hmm. and then constantly the other person's feeling like you're digging for something, yeah. you know? So I think then once you kind of start recognizing someone's patterns, if we're saying, okay, well, what is a toxic trait? What's a red flag? I guess it's anything that really makes you feel uncomfortable or that you can't be yourself. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm just thinking of one example of perhaps like you were saying, going out and socializing and you mentioned the fact of, okay, well, that's something that you really enjoy doing and I'm not I'm not that type of person. I don't really enjoy social situations, but that's okay. You go and enjoy yourself. It's honesty. That's honesty. And I guess a toxic trait in that example would be somebody who doesn't allow you to go out, who maybe has a problem with you socialising with your friends or is constantly on the phone to you all of the time. So when, when you are with your friends. When you yeah, are yeah. out, you know, thinking like, okay, well, where are you? What time are you coming home? And there's just not that level of trust there Mm. and I guess that's when you start to see those toxic patterns coming out you know if if that's a one-off then you know it always happens like I don't know if especially when you drinks are involved and alcohol and everything I think is really hard because I mean even I've had weird like nights where I've had a bit too much to drink Mm -hmm. and I'd acts out of character and I think that's I think we've all done it everybody acts out of character now and again what we're talking about here aren't we is is patterns of behavior and if you feel as though you can't be yourself in a relationship or your character is being chipped away then or you know what you want to do is being challenged then that's what we're we're talking about as as being a toxic trait I know it I um I've experienced a lot of that in my previous relationship and it's you know it's hard because you just almost want to go you've got nothing to worry about there's nothing for you to worry about and there's just no trust there at all and that's when all of them behaviors come to the surface and it happens all the time so what do you do at that point I mean the first thing is to recognize that it's it's not you so if you're triggering those behaviors in somebody else it's not necessarily to say that it's for any reason that you're doing it's them kind of tapping into Mm. their past experiences and if we're thinking about kinds of attachment styles you know that element of kinds of control or maybe mistrust in relationships is tapping into that anxious attachment style about worrying you know consciously worrying all the time that that other person isn't giving them enough and it's not necessarily to say that they're not it's just to say that they're they're seeking that constant reassurance all of the time Mm. because of patterns they've held before but at what point do you because you know you're always going to show the other person the level (laughs) of like like for example I would just be like okay well you know I've messaged you I've done everything that you've said that it's going to make you comfortable and they're still not okay with it what what now well you know we said it last time didn't we I guess it comes down to that individual person it's we've all got different boundaries and one person may may be okay with that they may also be similar and it's coming back to this thing about opposites attract and Mm. and quite similar characteristics in people because somebody who is really similar who may also be a homebody may be quite happy with that arrangement and may just want to spend all of their time with the other person as well there's you know we're not saying there's anything wrong with that where it comes it becomes difficult is when you have two people who are in conflict with that Mm. and that's when the opposites don't really attract and in actual fact we we start to kind of see well maybe this is where relationships could be better suited or more long-lasting with people with similar qualities and similar values to yourself brings me back to dating sites Mm -hmm. how you meet someone do you meet them because you're just super attractive to them again meeting someone in, in person is like well, they're not just a pretty face. They're actually a really nice person. Yeah, and they've got a lot more to them. You know, they they may share the same views as me or, you know, they kind of like the same things that I like or they have 
I mean, similar routine to me, and that I think yeah, is really important. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 one of them things that I don't know. I just really struggle with it. I just don't. Um, the more obviously people ask me what you know, why are you so against dating sites? Mm-hmm. I'm not against it because I do. I've got friends that are on them, and I don't disagree with them. I think if it works for you, that's absolutely fine. But then again, you have to be very realistic with yourself. Are you there to find a serious relationship or are you there for pure fun? I guess what you're saying really then is if you're looking for a meaningful relationship, you're not going to find it in a superficial way, basically. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's not, you know, my friend might be coming to me and say, well, I'm not ready for a serious relationship. Great. You're not ready, and then you're rec. But then again, fill your boots. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like recognizing it, isn't yeah. it? So you- <laughs> I just, I just realized what you just said. Then it, it took me a while, didn't it? <laughs> if you want to have fun, then go and have fun, guys. Jeez, don't like you know, like put too much pressure on yourselves. But me, for example, I'm at a point in my life where I'm not looking for something like short term Mm -hmm. and superficial and I know it can maybe scare people off but so be it because it's being honest isn't it and it's being your true authentic self if it's scaring someone off that means that they're not looking Mm. for something serious so you've done me a favor so we're back (laughs) to this idea of making our own dating website where you just list your red flags. Guys, can somebody please get onto and that? And your attachment style. Yeah, can somebody do it? <laughs> Whoever is into all this industry, can you please do it? Because we need some of that honesty back. Because everything's so superficial and surface level yeah. that it, it, it makes everything harder. It You know, they might not be for you. You know, we meet people in our lives and you just think, you might have just had to be in my life for this period of time and I'm a firm believer in that as well I'm a firm believer in you meet people not not even just romantically but you know you meet people throughout your life when you need them the most who Mm -hmm. really serve a purpose at the time to help you understand yourself a little bit more you learn a lot from other people and Mm -hmm. you can learn a lot about yourself through your interactions with other people I know and then you obviously when you're honest with someone then they might be going down a different path than Mm -hmm. you in life. So they might want to start a new business or they might want to start a new career or they might want to do something completely different to what you want to do. And imagine if you don't agree with that, you're going to end up living this life that you don't want to live just to be with that person. And it just brings you into that mentality of constant overthinking. I don't trust you going there. Mm -hmm. What are you doing there? call me da, 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 da. It's I, like, I think this is really difficult because I think it, there's going to be a lot of people out there mm. that really resonate with what you've just said being in that constant conflict where, I know a lot of people like that whereby you know maybe their partner is is quite selfish I'm just using that as an example or is quite different to them mm. maybe they have or they haven't communicated how they feel and they're now living in this cycle of am I good enough should I be doing something different have I done something wrong that's a big one isn't Mm. it you know if you've got a partner that's constantly reacting to you in a certain way because of you know that's just their patterns of of responses then that can leave somebody feeling really you know, it can dent their self esteem. It can and their confidence. Yeah, their confidence, feeling really self critical, mm. and I think in that situation, it's really, really important that people recognise that you can't control other people's behaviour, and if somebody's behaving in a dismissive way or a toxic way, it's not because you've done something wrong. Yeah, I've had problems with this in in past relationships where my confidence has gone way, literally to the ground. And I had to have a chat with myself and be like, what's wrong with me? Why am I like this? Mm -hmm. Like, this is not who I am. We all grow and maybe we might change the way we live our lives along the years. But 
when it changes dramatically like that, where I've become all of a sudden super anxious and I had no confidence, yeah. literally no confidence. And it became a point of like realization for me that I was like, I can't live like this because it's not only ruining my life, it's ruining everyone's life around me yeah. because I'm not confident I'm constantly saying that something's happening I'm always paranoid like yeah. constantly thinking that something's gonna happen yeah. or and it takes a lot of strength guys to admit that to yourself yeah. to say I'm not being my truest self right now I need to sort myself out I think though that, that sometimes it can be quite difficult like you say to to recognize it's the most that. difficult and also to acknowledge it and I'm just gonna say the words but narcissist you know I think everybody has had an experience with a narcissist I don't think people know what a narcissist is do they know because I don't think people know I think people can sometimes use it too much in situations whereas that person's actually not narcissist Mm -hmm. and I think then people not use it to because because they're too afraid but then they are dealing Mm -hmm. with a narcissist and I think it's probably a good opportunity for you to explain Mm. what traits of a narcissist are like the basics well a a narcissist is a personality type so it's not a particular person for example it's a personality type that is derived from our past experiences Mm. and it tends to kind of the the behaviors that we see shows up in quite manipulative behaviors so a narcissist will always be really confident about themselves and they'll subtly put you down in situations. So they may manipulate situations to appear as though it's your fault, for example. Or they may criticise you in a really subtle way. So a narcissist's behaviour is kind of, it goes really undercover. So it's not immediately obvious to the person who they're doing it to getting it under your skin (laughs) or the people around you yeah so it is it's about that constant chipping away constant getting under your skin like you just said or undermining the other person so that it gives them that feeling of superiority so a narcissist for example may make comments about your friends so they're not directly criticizing you but by criticizing your social circle it's indirectly breaking the bonds that that you have with other people Mm. with the sole aim of that person becoming overly dependent or overly reliant on them yeah always having something bad to say about my friends is always not a very good sign is it like what what is it that they have this urge to say it constantly Mm. is that a way of getting to you obviously because they're just thinking well I'm not going to say it to them I'm just going to say something about their friends that's really going to trigger them yeah well it's it's it never is about that other person so it's never a way of kind of well it is a way of breaking down the other person but not in a direct way it's more to do with their feelings of insecurity and their needs for control Mm -hmm. and by limiting a person's social circle for example you're reducing their dependence on other people which therefore increases their dependence on you as the narcissist so they basically just to like make it super easy they're basically trying to make you feel like you need them. Yeah, that's it. And by feeling, by you feeling that you need them, makes them feel validated, mm. makes them feel wanted and secure. That is so bad. I'm sorry, but that's so unhealthy in every is, way possible. It, it's a real unhealthy personality trait. And um, narcissists generally don't recognize that they're a narcissist. Of course they don't. But they will feel uh, quite superior to everybody else. They'll feel as though, you know, everybody looks up to them. They hold an element of power over people. They may be in a really good position. They may have nice things. They may crack jokes and, you know, be appear to be the the perfect social person, for example, or really kind on the outside. So it's a facade, generally. 
Yeah. And the initial stages of a relationship with a narcissist are generally the best. So it's that kind of oh, real excitement. So, you know, you're doing lots of fun things. They'll try and win you over. They'll spoil you with gifts. But then in the next breath, they could be really cold and withdrawn and kind of maybe not answer your phone calls. That's reverse psychology, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's an, a bit of an element of it, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, oh, now I'm going to cut all this greatness out to make you worry. Well, that's exactly what it is. So it's another element of control. It's that kind of, I'll drop a, I'll drop a little carrot, I'll keep it dangling, oh, and then God. I'll take it away so that you want some more. I just think that's so unattractive. Like, what the hell? Why would you want to be put in the situation? Or why would you want to put someone else in that it's not, mental yeah. state? It's not a conscious... It's, it's not a is conscious Is it, action. though, or is it? Because, mm, you know... Yeah. I think some people are well aware that they're doing it, and they don't care. Maybe it's a pattern of behaviour that they've just always had. Maybe it's a pattern of behaviour that they've they just experienced think it's normal. Yeah, themselves. So that's their normality. And... Don't forget, there's there's kind of a biological aspect to this as well in terms of being attracted to to that fun, that kind of real passionate element of a relationship and then not having it. So it's that dopamine hit. So when you first get with someone who's, you know, showing you loads of affection, showing you lots of attention, there's attraction there and you're doing fun things your brain's going, yes, 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 it's ticking all the boxes, it's releasing that adrenaline and that dopamine. And then when that's taken away and you don't have it for a day or a week or so, you don't see that person, they take it away from you, it's almost like a withdrawal. So yeah. your brain's thinking, oh, I want more of that, I want more of that. Yeah, because that, that brings me cycle. back to the, how do you deal after you break up with someone like that? How do you do it? Because you're not getting any of that dopamine and any of that excitement. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you are looking and craving that type of behavior from another partner. Mm -hmm. And then you're going into that cycle again of meeting someone that has got the same traits as someone that has behaved with you like that. Yeah. And let's, for example, you meet someone that is completely the opposite to your partner and you don't feel that excitement, that fire, that constantly, oh my God, you think, you know, you don't know what's yeah. going to happen next. And I think that can be really difficult when you break up from that type of toxic relationship first, initially, because generally the person who has been behaving in that way will find it really easy to cut off. Mm. So you will be left in limbo almost with those feelings. Yeah, oh God. I think that's, that's so sad. It I, is. I I can recognise behaviours like that with my friends. I have had friends in the past that have had to deal with narcissists. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult to watch my friends go through that withdrawal and you can really see them going through it and really, really at the bottom. Yeah. And they don't, you can just see it on their face. They just don't know how to get out of it and how to deal with it. And that's the hardest part because generally when you get into those cycles of being attracted to, say, a narcissist or somebody with that avoidant attachment style where they maybe drop a carrot and then keep you at arm's length again, is that that pattern tends to continue throughout your life. And really it's built on our earliest experiences. And what our bodies really like is familiarity. So they become used to what we've experienced and we become comfortable with patterns that we've had or known in our past whether mm. they're healthy or unhealthy patterns it doesn't matter because our brain kind of goes well I know this this feels comfortable I've been here before I know what to expect mm. and that's why you see those types of people falling into the same or similar types of relationships yeah. 
time after time and that can be really difficult if you're a friend watching that on the outside. If somebody's watching now and is feeling like this or has been dealing with a narcissist, what would be the first thing you would say to them? As a, would you, how would you advise them how to, maybe not advise them, but like give them your opinion on how to deal with a difficult situation like that? Like, would you say, you know, take your time, you know, make sure you look after yourself after a relationship like this? don't jump into something too quickly Mm -hmm. when you're not healed yourself because that's a big thing again it is and I think you know you have to recognize the patterns before you're able to take any steps of controlling it because it always boils down to this it's about recognizing your own patterns of responses in relationships we all have patterns of responses that Mm -hmm. we can control and it may be uncomfortable to acknowledge those patterns, but it really is a starting point that before you're able to break it, you have to know what it is. And a lot of the time, we're really quick to blame other people for their behaviours. So it may well be you've just come out of a relationship like that and all your friends are saying how bad the other person was and they're no good for you. You're so much better than that. And you can really overlook your own kinds of patterns that got you stuck there in the first place and if you're missing them well then it's really easy to fall back into another relationship Mm. where you're going to be in the same situation so the first step is taking a really deep hard look at yourself and thinking what was it that actually kept me in that relationship what was I looking for or what was I getting out of that relationship that that was keeping me in that cycle yeah it's recognizing the patterns isn't it again we're going back to patterns how why did you accept that behavior for so long time and what made you not take any action towards Mm -hmm. it you know is it the fact that your confidence has been put down is it the fact that you know, you're scared of that person because we're not talking, obviously, there, there's so many cases of people that there's a lot of abuse, you know, yeah. like physical abuse. We're not talking just about, obviously, mental abuse is horrendous because that's, like, done in such a subtle way mm-hmm. that doesn't look like physical abuse. But there's different people that have dealt with different things and just think, am I scared of that person? Is that why I didn't take any action or didn't recognise certain things? Yeah, and look, there's there's obviously different extremes of this, isn't there? Oh, yeah. You know, there's there's episodes of violence or emotional abuse, where, which is, you know, absolutely not a, a, acceptable yeah. and really, really difficult for people to get out of those relationships. But as well, there's also the more subtle forms of abuse which maybe people wouldn't categorize as abuse what do you mean by that and i mean those more elements of maybe dismissing a person's feelings so you wouldn't necessarily categorize them as abuse but it can leave the other person feeling unworthy unloved it can diminish their self-confidence and their self-esteem and it it is kind of acknowledging those different types of traits in a person and what you're looking for. So on a real kind of surface level, if somebody is in a relationship where perhaps the other person isn't on the same page as them, is quite an avoiding personality, is quite dismissive of their feelings, but the person thinks, okay, well, what do I actually want out of this relationship? Because it's not serving me right Mm -hmm. now. And like what you coming back to what you said before, if a person is listening, who's thinking, I don't feel myself, I can't express myself, I can't be who I want to be, I've not got the self confidence, it's you know diminished. It's thinking, well, what do I want out of a relationship, really? And if it's you know I need affection or I need a person to be attentive towards me or respectful to me, Mm -hmm. then it's about ultimately thinking okay well what do I have to do in my life to make that happen because if you stay in a relationship which is not aligned with those things that you've recognized then you're just going to be in that negative cycle 
Yeah, I think a good way of approaching this situation would be just take your time. Just take your time to get to know what you actually want. I don't know, in a way of like saying, don't distract yourself with someone else before you've figured out what's in your head and what you truly want from a relationship because it's so easy to mentally distract yourself from what you actually need to work on and then you end up in the same cycle again because you're just not giving yourself that time to recognize do I want someone that's affectionate do this endless examples that I can give you right Mm -hmm. now but taking that time to just be you sat at home thinking about everything it's almost like going back in time and thinking where everything's gone wrong and everything, but recognizing that actually from the next relationship, I don't want that behavior. And I will make sure that I take all the steps that is necessary to make sure that I don't get myself stuck there again. Yeah. And, you know, truly thinking about what's important to you as a person, you know, where do you want to be in your life? What type of partner do you think would complement that? Because that's the other thing as well. You, you have to complement one another. And this is where the, the friendship element comes in. Mm. But also about being secure in yourself, knowing what you're happy with, what you're not happy with, mm. what your boundaries are. Because I think there's so many people who just detach without yeah. actually communicating that. Oh. And that can go on for such a long yeah. time. And that's where we start to see resentment creeping in, don't we? Mm. Well, I, it's, uh, again, I think, like, for example, I struggled with confidence. Yeah, let's just take this one. I need a time to figure out how to get out of my shell again. It's been a bit of a journey where I've had to really really dig like go digging like really deep and understand where it all went wrong how did I get there why did I get there and try try and get my confidence up to what it was before before I even try and think about another relationship yeah because if you're going to go into another relationship and your confidence is down well you're going to just be struggling with that well you'll always be constantly blaming that other person yeah. as well and i think if you don't look at yourself and look at your own flaws and mm. maybe where you're going wrong or what you can do to to be the best version of yourself it's so easy to point the finger at somebody else and say mm. oh well you know it's because of them and it's because of this and But then you'll quickly go into another relationship and the same patterns will be there because the patterns are your responses. But I know people that keep saying like, oh, I just don't want to be on my own. I feel lonely. I get it. I get it. I get it. It's hard. It's hard to be on your own, especially after you've been with someone for such a long time and you've had that company there regardless of the situation it's routines and habits yeah. though isn't it and the, it comes back to you exactly Comfort. yeah Comfort. what the brain loves what it's always known it loves those habits those comforts those this is familiar i'm going to stick here and the brain doesn't really distinguish between you know this is familiar and unhealthy or mm. this is familiar and healthy and that's good the brain yeah. doesn't distinguish that it's our neural pathways so when we're talking about habits, it's it's like the, the positive mindset we said in episode one. So the more that we can practice a positive mindset, the stronger the neural pathways will be mm. in flipping a situation to a positive narrative. And it's the same with habits. If you are in a difficult relationship or you've come out of a relationship and you're finding it difficult being on your own, then you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone to create the new neural pathways of being on your own. So it's building new habits and it's a conscious effort to build in habits that are going to be healthy for you. Like slowly, every day. We're not saying wake up in the morning and change your life completely to the point that it's overwhelming because this is another thing that people do wrong. They try and change too many things too quickly. And then it doesn't give your brain time to adjust. How on earth are you going to adjust 
to all these massive changes on your day-to-day life if you've not taken yeah. s- taken a step-by-step. And you you actually can't. So you can't if, physically if you think, and mentally do no. it. If you think of it like an elastic band, the, the brain will constantly want to pull us down the pathway that's familiar. It's like an elastic band pulling yeah. you back to what you already know. When in reality, what you have to do to break that elastic band is slowly take a different path but take that different path over and over and over again so that you strengthen them, yeah. that bond. You know, it's it's kind of, it takes time. It takes effort, a conscious effort, and it takes discipline as well. Yeah. I think if anyone could just be more kinder to themselves and understand that it's a process, it's not going to be easy, and you have to acknowledge the fact that being lonely is not a bad thing. And it's not, you're not lonely. You only feel lonely because you've had someone next to you from month to month or years on end. Yeah. And being with yourself and having your own company is a privilege. Yeah. It's actually a privilege because you get time with yourself to get to know yourself again and what you like and what you don't. Or if you've gone through a period of time where you've changed a lot and adjusting to the fact that you're a different person now. You're not that old person that used to be 10, 20 years ago. You need to adjust yourself to the fact that I am a bit different now. I have to not live in the past. That's a big thing, isn't it? Living in the past is really, really, really damaging for us. And we all do it. We all go back and think, oh, yeah. I wish it was different. Oh, well, I wish, you know. It's, it's flipping the narrative, isn't it? So, like what you've just said about being scared of being alone and kind of not wanting to sit with your own thoughts and things, it's about seeing it in a different way. And it's about looking at it as an opportunity to get to know yourself yeah. and really think about what are those patterns or responses or behaviors that maybe I need to change or seek differently in a different partner and just take the time to to build up those healthy habits in yourself yeah I just don't rush it guys I think the best thing you can the bet the the best favor you can do for yourself is take your time and just you know just don't rush anything you know you don't want to regret anything you don't want to be like oh my god I wish I've you know stayed with myself a little bit more and understand myself because you're only going to go and damage another relationship basically if you've not healed yourself and you go into a brand new relationship you're only gonna just cause more problems and make make the other person feel like they're not good enough because you're not you're not healed yourself. Yeah, and it, you know, it, you just need to just recognize it again. Self awareness. We keep going on about this, but it's just so important. Mm-hmm. It's actually crucial to be self aware. And again, I, maybe if you can't be self aware, then maybe you should be looking at that. Yeah, well, it's it's the biggest place to start, isn't it? It's it's always looking inside yourself, identifying your habits, trying to be a better person, staying consistent staying disciplined yeah. and finding healthy habits I think is a big one as well healthy habits what makes they don't you have feel to be good. big ones they don't have to be big ones they just have to make you feel good as a person not eating garlic cloves in one go <laughs> <laughs> oh Maybe my not. god I actually you know what well, while you were talking before I could just feel that coming up and I was like oh my I god thinking, when we were talking about healthy habits then I was like that is one that is getting crossed off yeah I'm not doing that every day but, Ma- but it ma- helped you didn't it it has helped me but you know what imagine imagine if you were like my partner coming over now that would be a toxic trait I'd be like ick ick <laughs> it triggers me ick. it's an ick do you Come stink love, of garlic? Take, take some whole Ick. garlic clove. I know. Can you imagine? I actually, I've had actually a couple of girls at Club Reformer today because you obviously you've missed it. Missed it Lucky today. girl because she absolutely murdered us. Um, but it, it, I had a couple of girls that seen all my story and said, uh, "What the hell, Elise? What is that all about? Can you please tell us what does that actually do?" And I was like, "It's like an old school thing of saying if you don't want to." 
you know, take antibiotics, go take in, that. take some garlic is this and from ginger. Romania or is this just no, like, it's not just a Romanian I'm, thing. Is it not? Is it like I, it could be an Eastern European thing? Right, maybe, okay. I think because everyone that I know from that side is always done this. <laughs> you will. Okay, go and get some garlic down <laughs> your throat and l- ward the vampires literally off. <laughs> and that that tonic that i made you last oh, night so good, though so it was good. a bit different than this what we have yeah. now it was really warm and just goodness dr elise to the rescue i know but if you need any advice guys how to get rid of a cold you know where to go <laughs> <laughs> you might have to eat garlic though so <laughs> bear in mind you know it actually stinks in the air it does stink in the air <laughs> on that really. note <laughs> we are at the end again of episode know, three how the hell it did just, that time go it goes so quickly everybody and i think at you know, what really surprises me is we don't actually have a script either, do we? We yeah. just do just chat away. But you know what? what I actually think, even although we have an idea what we want to talk about, and obviously the questions do come in, and we do try and put at least two questions in every episode, as we said, we want to look into it properly. We want to, you know, we don't want to just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, just do this chat. and just... Um, but I think what it is is mainly the way we work as friendship as well we take things in conversation as you would speak to someone every day we're not sitting down here you know like trying to be super rigid and like you know go through all of these things we are genuinely speaking like you would speak to your best friend and that was the aim of the podcast wasn't it it was kind of these conversations that me and you have on a daily basis we thought is so important that people out there are aware that these are normal conversations that people have these are normal issues that people have and there's a lot of the time people suffer in silence and that ultimately is what we want to change people who are sat there for example who are struggling with some of the things that we've spoken about in today's episode we want them to know that you know things can be different other people do go through similar situations and you're not the only one guys we all go through it like we all face problems Mm -hmm. in day to day literally every day i just it's it's a space of bringing yourself in that environment where you know we want to make people feel comfortable Mm -hmm. you know to speak yeah and And nobody's perfect no of course again we're not saying any you know we all and you shouldn't strive for perfection Mm -hmm. either that's I think I want to finish it on that note I think don't strive for perfection because you're only literally gonna end up failing at it because you're not gonna strive for perfection ever I'd really like to talk about that actually in another episode because that perfectionism can lead to disappointment it's a really big thing and I think a lot of people nowadays really aspire to be perfect because how on earth are you gonna do that there's always that illusion though isn't there there's like that's why it's called an illusion yeah it is (laughs) because it is an illusion like you're not gonna be perfect nobody is and nobody will ever be perfect we're all human we are you know we make mistakes and and we would love to hear some of those mistakes that maybe people have made yourselves or others so yeah give us a shout you know where we are We'd love to discuss what you want to hear on our next episode. I like, know, um, subscribe, share. <laughs> She's doing it again. I'm doing it. She tells me to do this. She's like, don't forget to do it. And then you're like a proud parent when I do it. I know, but you, do, you know what? You're very natural at it because I, I didn't even have to prompt you then. You just did it. <laughs> I did. I, I did. don't even have to make an effort. There you go. She just did it herself. But yeah, guys, you'll find us on Instagram tiktok we're we're kind of like getting the rhythm with tiktok at the moment and um yeah Yeah. we've got link tree in our bio in on instagram and then if you click on there you'll see all of our little cheeky things there (laughs) i don't know why i've done that no i'm I'm not doing that again But yeah, um, again, thanks for watching, guys. Honestly, we yeah. really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. And see then you we'll next see you next time. time.